So um, I would like to demonstrate uh, a little to-do application and um, what it does um, is you can add a to-do like this, hello world. It will save the to-do. You can view the to-dos on like a main screen. You can delete the to-do and you can go in and view a to-do. So just for demonstration, I'll do something else. World, hello, so the reverse. And you will see that um, it's here as well. So this is the new one. And there's no edit functionality at the moment, uh, just adding, so I still have to add the edit functionality. Now, underlying, it uses um, SvelteKit. And actually, it uses the latest logic in SvelteKit, which is um, the very cool uh, form actions. Um, so uh, let's try and run through the code and, and explain a little bit about what's going on. So here we have the code for the main page. Uh, so I will uh, make that a little bit smaller. Well, not that small, but I'll make it a bit uh, like this, so we can see the full code. Um, and then I will put my browser uh, next to it so we can see the actual app. Um, let's close a few things here. All right, so this is the main, uh, main page. Um, and um, here we have um, a uh, data logic. So data is loaded through in each block. And here we have export let data. So these are the two important things to be able to view the data. Now what's interesting here is that the data is being loaded through um, a um, file called page.server.js. So if we go in there, you will see that uh, if I go to the code, um, I'm um, getting through the fetch API a list from Trello using an environment variable to kind of hide my ideas. Um, not ideas, but ideas. Um, and uh, basically, this is a, a fetch call that pulls in the data. Interestingly, there's also an actions, which is the new feature in Svelte, or Svelte Kit, I should say, that um, allows code to run on the uh, server side and then be progressively enhanced on the client side. So to get an idea of how that works, um, let's go to the template. And in the template, um, if we follow uh, the code for a card, you'll see that within the card, there is something uh, interesting going on here, which is this form on this form you will find that there is an action question mark slash delete and then the question mark slash delete actually it's a query parameter that refers to the delete in the other file so here in this export const actions there is a delete action and what it does is it gets the form data so it's using the form data um, api um, you, which you can find a very good reference for at MDN. And basically, uh, a simple way to explain it is that on each form element, you will have um, a, a value, a name. Uh, so let's find our form um, here. In this case, it's a hidden input with a value of data ID and a name of ID. And here, we have this um, delete action that's you that's deleting based on the data ID of the item. So very interesting. We're using actual form elements, not like some controlled inputs uh, react like code, but we're using an actual form element. So let's say maybe the user doesn't have JavaScript or JavaScript fails for some reason, this could still go true. 
I didn't test it yet, but theoretically it's felt Git um, would allow that to still be called uh, and uh, the thing should still go through. It's one of those things that I think Rich Harris demonstrated in one of his previous talks. So let's go to another piece of code, which is about adding uh, adding the item. Here, actually, we're in my Trello board, which is my database, and you can see that it's synced up with the data. So let's add a new item. I'll add a to-do, um, and maybe I'll do like a third item so we can see what's going on. There's a third item being added. You will also see on the API board, there's a third item being added. Um, and then um, on the code end, so let's go to the code of the, um, the add um, page. On the, on the add page, we still have some leftover code here. Uh, this, we're also using form data. This might be a bit clearer. It's not a hidden input. Um, it's just the value of this, this input and this input that we're getting. So this input, if we would go to the code, uh, this one is called name equals name. And this other one is called name equals desk. So we have our uh, form here um, on top. Um, let's see. Uh, form and um, it's using the add uh, action so once again uh, we go to the page.server.js which has the same name as the page within the add folder which is uh, the folder that's used for the add route and within this route we have an action that's called add it's getting the form data and it's calling a function called API through an await uh, method um, where it's using posts on the endpoint cards with uh, a payload of uh, this, uh, this data. So once again, a secret list ID and um, the, uh, the data that the user entered, so name and description. So let's dive into the API uh, here. Uh, this is a file that I got from um, from the uh, sample to do's app, uh, Svelkit sample to do's app, but I changed it a little bit uh, because instead of calling the Svelkit to do's API, I'm calling um, the Trello API. Uh, I also worked with uh, environment variables because I don't want to expose my secret keys on the internet. And um, here is a, a similar uh, similar lines of code as in the original uh, API.js that you can find in the SvelteKit demo itself. So all in all, this was a, a bit of a long-winded tour of uh, my experiments with uh, trying to get this working. You can find um, the uh, repository on Wolfer slash SvelteKit Trello app. And here are some instructions on if you wanna like get your own Trello account with your own database to use the app yourself. Because it uses a um, published database, let's say my own Trello account, I'm not gonna uh, provide a demo URL so if you want to try it you will have to set it up yourself but feel free to uh, take a look around the code and if you do um, try it out yourself and you have any code comments uh, feel free to make an issue and um, we can improve the app together.